Okay, you saw the title. I started my career in higher education in 1995 as a full-time visiting assistant professor and left my full-time work in higher ed in 2023. Now, my final job was as a vice president of academic affairs and full professor at my university's community college. Yep, it took me 29 years and a lot of positions to get to the point I'm at now. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about my journey and some lessons I've learned along the way. I do this in hopes that you'll also learn something that can help you along your journey in higher education. Now, whether you're an educator, an administrator, or simply looking for new job possibilities, this video is for you. Stay tuned. Greetings all, I'm Dr. Zatur Woodley, a retired university professor and a former academic vice president. Currently, I'm a small business owner and a published author. I also teach part-time at one of the community colleges here in New Mexico. I'm also the proud pastor of a growing virtual ministry, Go Christian Center of Albuquerque, New Mexico. All right, now let me start off by telling you this. This is not going to be like one of those tell-all books. You know, those kinds of stories may end up in my memoirs, but I'm not writing or publishing that now, maybe later. Instead, I just want to share a couple of lessons I've learned along the way. And I'm sharing this in hopes that it will help those of you that are looking to advance in higher ed. So let me start by showing you where I've worked and the positions that I've held. Okay, so these are a list of the universities and community colleges I've worked for. I've worked at four universities and four community colleges during my now 29 years in higher education. Now, during my time at those institutions, I've held both part-time and full-time positions. Here's a list of the titles that I've held over the years. Now, as you can see from that list, I've worked a, a lot of positions pretty much at all levels of academic affairs. At different levels, I've learned different lessons that help me advance at institution. I've also learned lessons that help me maintain my composure as I exited positions. So let me share with you five lessons I've learned along the way. Okay, lesson number one, you need to retain an attorney. Now, this was a lesson I learned later in my career, but now as I coach clients, I have them find an attorney to check in with when they're securing their first full-time tenure track position. Now, why do I do that? Well, because higher education is big business and you need someone on your side that you can check in with as you're going through the hiring process. This is especially needed when you're negotiating your first contract as a dean, an associate vice president, a vice president, or a provost, and here's why. At the time you're negotiating your entrance, you should also be negotiating your exit. Now, a mentor helps you know what to ask for, but an attorney reviews your offer letter and contract to ensure you're protected from the beginning until the end. If you are a tenure track faculty member, here's what I suggest you look for. Look for an attorney who understands promotion and tenure. What you're going to do is get them a copy of your promotion and tenure documents, go over it with them, like go over it line by line and talk about how best to proceed. If you ever feel like you've been treated, you're being treated unfairly or discriminated against in the process. Because yes, discrimination does happen sometimes in the process. If you're an administrator, I suggest you're hiring someone who knows employment and contract law. It's bonus points if they understand the inner workings of higher education administration, especially what they can do about helping you write exit strategies into your final contract. So lesson number one, retain an attorney. All right, lesson number two, sometimes you need to step backwards to move forward. Everyone gets in a frenzy about what titles are and what the trajectory should be. They think you have to hold one title and then the next step for you 
is the next title on the ladder. But the truth is, sometimes a lower level position is what you really need to gain the right experience before moving up. You need that right experience to appear on your CV and to get that experience in order to prepare you for that next title. So I'll give you an example of where I had to do that in my career. I was in an an interim associate dean's position, and those associate dean's positions were being made available for those of us that were in the position that we would be appointed in those positions. But I knew if I ever wanted to advance in higher education and become a dean, what I'd need to have is experience supervising staff and budgetary supervision experience. So I applied for and earned a position as a director, director of distance learning specifically. Um, I became a director because that position would give me the two things I needed for my CV as I was advancing at the institution. Supervisory experience for staff members as well as uh, budgetary experience, supervisory experience, like uh, uh, administrating budgets, especially large grants. I think I ended up uh, administrating a $1.5 million grant. And all of that came from me stepping back to a director's position rather than remaining in an, an associate dean's position. So you see, that's an example of stepping back to get the experience I needed before I could apply for a position I wanted. Now, in my case, that move led to my first associate vice president's job. But you you get the idea, right? So sometimes you need to step back in order to move up. And that's lesson number two. And lesson number three, never say yes to a position when you don't know who your supervisor will be. Now, listen. That was a hard lesson for me to learn. Now, since then, I've interviewed for and turned down positions after I learned that lesson. It only took me the one time, and then I tried not not to make that mistake again. So here's why. There was one position I took and ended up having four different bosses in one year. I mean, even to talk about it is stressful when you say it out loud. See, I took that position thinking I could work for anybody. And then I ended up working for everybody. It was just too much. Luckily, I had an attorney who helped me exit from that position gracefully. I will refer you back up to lesson number one uh, to remind you of the importance of having an attorney. So, okay, that's lesson number three. Just say no if you don't know who your supervisor will be. And lesson number four, move out as you move up. Now, I actually learned this lesson from an article that I read about uh, becoming a college president. Um, Yeah, at one point I had an aspiration to become a college president until I did my job as an academic vice president. And then at that point I knew That was not going to happen for me ever. I never wanted it after that. Anyway, in the article, the author said that you should always want to move institutions as you're moving up in administration. And the reason he gave was how difficult it would be for you to supervise the people that were your colleagues at one point, your friends at one point. So if you got the job, You'd want to move institutions, especially if some of your colleagues applied for the job and they didn't get it and you did. So as I advanced, I had the ability to move institutions and even states. I really do think those transitions helped me earn what I needed along the way in the positions that I held. So that's one of those lessons I would definitely suggest for those of you looking to advance. As you move up, considering moving out. And finally, lesson number five, you can always go back to the faculty. So this is something that I told myself along the way because I love being a faculty member. Now, listen, I'm good at being an administrator, but I'm great at being a faculty member. I love being faculty. Now, this idea for me of going back to the faculty wasn't a demotion kind of move. Instead, it was a place for me to fall back to that I actually loved and and enjoyed doing as a 
person working in higher education. Now, going back to the faculty is especially true if you're moving institutions. You can negotiate a fallback position if the administrative position doesn't work out for any reason. We call that having retreat rights. That's why you'll be negotiating your exit at the time you negotiate your entrance. See, right now, when you first get the job, you're so excited uh, that you just want to start. You're full of vim and vigor at the beginning. Hope springs eternal. At that point, there's always the option for you to exit from an administrative position and teach part-time even while building your own consultancy. But that's a future lesson I'll have to teach you about later. So just remember this lesson for now, lesson number five. Don't feel trapped. Know that you can always go back to the faculty. And that is it for today's video. Listen, I work with individuals who want to advance in higher education, but have questions about the best way for them to do it. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to schedule some time to meet with me and confidentially discuss your career plans. Just follow the link and find out more about my rates and how to book an appointment. Okay, that's it for me. Now, if you have any questions, don't forget you can leave those in the comments below. I hope you've been able to get some lessons learned in this video that can help you as you consider advancing in your career in higher education. Thanks so much for watching and have a terrific day. Hey, thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you engaging with the content here on The Woman is Scholar. Now, if you haven't already done so, please feel free to click the like button and also think about subscribing. That way you'll be notified whenever another video like this one comes out. Thanks so much for watching and have a terrific day.